Hello all, welcome to Unacademy Articulate program. I am Shilpa Nagaraju. I will be taking you through art and culture and news for the past one year. Hello all, welcome to Unacademy. So, let's see what's happening at an academy. The right time for you all to start for UPSC preparation and this program is happening from today to 28th July. Now you hurry up and the price increase will be happening from 1st August onwards. There will be extension till mains, additional 10% plus free test series only on the combo. An academy notes will be provided for you and CSC Assure will be available for this program. You can save on the combo and the test series is worth rupees 30,000 comes free here. This is applicable on one year subscription onwards. That is GS program, iconic program and combo program. One subscription to crack your PSE CAC. There's a limited period offer and you join now because there are price hike from 1st August. Subscribe now and go for it. Here you will get a uh, 2.3 lakh uh, package which is worth 2.3 lakh will be now available only for 57,500. So there is one subscription to Crack It All program where you where you will be subscribing to the combo and it has become much more exciting now. This will be having 25% off with the optional and 10% if you use my referral code. My referral code is Shilpa N10. This is my referral code and you can use it for any of the subscription. This is Shilpa N10 and uh, Shilpa N10 here you can join me on my telegram channel uh, shilpa underscore an academy and also follow my profile on an academy where i'll be taking current affairs classes and uh, uh, you know international relations classes and also uh, the pyq sessions are happening from four to five so please follow my profile and know my schedule on an academy so use my code for a 10 percent referral code discount you will also get additional 10 percent off on plus gs and optional only you also get free optional test series plus prelims and mains test series this comes free one year one year subscription will be valid till mains 2022 two year subscription valid till mains 2023 you can subscribe now gs plus optional and iconic gs plus optional so India's most comprehensive series for optional preparation is happening here. This will be only on GS Combo and Iconic Combo subscriptions. You have 21 tests for each optional course with 16 sectional tests and 5 full length tests. This is worth rupees 15,000 and it comes free with one year and above combo subscription. The offer ends on 28th July. It is curated by top educators, analyzed by top educators, comprehensive model answers, the flexibility to write the test for seven days after the test is live, 20 plus tests in a year as per UPSC standards. CSE Assure pro pro program has been launched by an academy and here we enjoy you that you clear UPSC and if you are not satisfied with your result, the next attempt is on us. You get a free one year extension on your two year subscription. Terms and conditions are applied. Please go, go through it when you are going for the CSC Assure program. You crack it and be assured to be with you. In this, you have to purchase two years and above subscription and you can get the CSC Assure program. Please read the terms and conditions which are applicable. India's most comprehensive UPSC test series is happening with 80 tests every year, uh, 80 tests every year with 50 prelims tests and 30 mains tests. So you practice till you crack it. It is worth rupees 30,000 and, and it comes free with the one year subscription onwards. It is curated by top educators, analyzed by top educators. It is curated as per the changing UPSC pattern and you can compete with the best in India. So UPSC CAC ultimate surprise may have 20 bucks. So many of mess you messaged. Pratham Pawar, you are telling that you are struggling with the swords which substantially covers art and culture. You should first start with NCRT 11th and 12th. So first start with NCRT. And then go for Nitin Singhania. You can also follow uh, Igno website. Mein, uh, you have the art and culture uh, means like 
some some programs are there art and culture ka you can follow those pdfs and you also see ccrt website it is having a lot of information especially ccrt uh, websites are very good you can check out the information there uh, this is worth rupees 10000 uh, 20 books bilingual it it will completely cover the syllabus and highly structured for the ease of learning it is created by the best upsc experts previous year questions are included here and it's updated with current affairs you can chase your upsc dream with a loan for upsc preparation on an academy and nothing can stop you from achieving your dream you have uh, zero good swati uh, it is zero processing fee zero percent interest rate approval in two hours and no hidden charges with minimal paperwork and flexible and you are so an academy comeback scholarship test is happening every sunday at 11 am use my code shilpai and 10 and go for the uh, test you can win scholarships which is worth rupees 4 crore 60 questions in 60 minutes it comes free live on android and tests are in both hindi and english good afternoon all of you good afternoon kitab series is a new innovative course which has been started here and it will help in widening the horizon of the learners for upsc csc it started it is started from just uh, july 17th it is a value addition course which covers discussion on two books per week the books are covered directly or indirectly it is related to the upsc syllabus it will benefit the learners especially for indian society international relations ethics and essay papers it is analyzed by top educators of an academy new batches for upsc csc for 21 22 23 aspirants are starting from 28 july you have phoenix revision batches for upsc csc and it starts from 28th july you also have one year batches two year batches and npt batches you have iconic program with personal guidance study planner study material experts guidelines and test analysis so there is two types of subscription that is subscription and iconic subscription and uh, choose the one which is best suitable for you and go for it let's crack it with an academy i'm shilpa nagaraju i'll be taking you through art and culture in news for the past one year now the first topic is about basavanna and they have asked for incorrect statements kindly answer i'll be checking through the live chat i'll give you 3 minutes now it is 3 7 So three ten, I answer. I will tell you. Now you can use. Okay, so Pratham has answered C. Others, ओके प्रथम प्रभु अंकित अंजुम गट हैव आंसर्ड अदर्स अनदर वन मिनट last few seconds no 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 it is not a quiz question it is a this explanatory session
Okay, so let's see here. This is with reference to Baswana, and the first first one. Where is this? What's happening here? Okay. So the first statement is he wrote Basava Raja Devara Ragale. It was not it is not written by him. This is wrong statement. So first statement is wrong and the correct answer is B. If you eliminate all these options. He established Anubhava Mantapa which is also called the first parliament of the world. Yes, this is correct because uh, because recently uh, they had uh, this inaugural ceremony of the a new Anubhava Mantapa which has been constructed in Karnataka. He rejected rituals, icons and symbols. This is correct. Sorry, this is correct. One and three are correct. Sorry, incorrect, right? Yes, one and three are incorrect. So, they have asked for incorrect statement. Only second statement is correct. Yes, correct, correct, Pratham. It is one and three. So, who all have you, who all of you have answered C? It is Pratham, Prabhu, and uh, Harsh have answered uh, correct. They have asked for incorrect statement. The first statement and the third statement are wrong. Let's see here. Basava Jayanti has marked the birth anniversary of Lord Basavanna. Now, who is this Lord Basavanna? He's 12th century poet and philosopher. He's the founding saint of Lingayat faith. This year, it fell on 14th May 2021. So, he was a philosopher, a statesman, a Kannada poet and a social reformer during the reign of Kalachuri dynasty king Bijjala I of Karnataka. So, it was the birth anniversary of Lord, Baswan, Lord Baswanna, they say. And who was he? He was a 12th century poet, philosopher, founding saint of Lingayat faith and... Uh, he served under the Kalachuri dynasty of King Bijjala of Kalachuri dynasty in Karnataka. He spread social awareness through his poetry and his poetry is famously known as His poetry is famously known as Vachana, Vachana literature in, Kar in Kannada. So he spread social awareness through his poetry popularly known as Vachanas. He rejected gender or social discrimination, superstition and rituals. He introduced new public institutions such as Anubhava Mantapa or the Hall of Spiritual Experience. This welcomed men and women from all socio-economic backgrounds to discuss spiritual and mundane questions of life in open. As a leader, he developed and inspired a new devotional movement named Veera Shaivas or Ad heroic worshippers of Shiva. The movement has shared its roots in the ongoing Tamil Bhakti movement, particularly the Shaiva Nayanar's tradition over the 7th to 11th centuries. So please remember he was a great philosopher, a statesman, Kannada poet and a social reformer. Now as a philosopher, he has, uh, you know, he has started this Anubhava Mantapa uh, a public institution where people used to come and discuss their problems and rituals, mundane problems and all. Yes, Bijjala 1. Bijjala 1. Yes, I have written here Bijjala 1 of Kalachuri dynasty. Yes, it is in Bagalkot. In Bagalkot district of Karnataka, uh, Pratham. So, see here, he was under King Bijjala I of Kalachuri dynasty in Karnataka. He tried to spread social awareness through his poetry called Vachana literature. He rejected gender and social discrimination, the superstitions and rituals all over prevalent in the North Karnataka region. He established a new public institution such as Anubhava Mantapa or the Hall of Spiritual Experience. He welcomed men and women from all the socio-economic backgrounds to discuss the spiritual and mundane questions of life in open. 
As a leader, he developed and inspired a new devotional movement named Veera Shaivas or ardent heroic worshippers of Shiva. The movement shared its roots in the ongoing Tamil Bhakti movement, particularly the Shaiva Nayanar's tradition over the 7th to 11th century. So this this had roots in uh, the Tamil Bhakti movement, which is the Shaiva and Na Shaiva Nayanar's tradition. I already told you the followers of Shiva are called Nayanars and the followers of Vishnu are called Alvars. This was between 7th and 11th century. He was the founding saint of Lingayat faith. So Basava uh, championed the devotional worship. He rejected the temple worship and rituals which was led by the Brahmins. He replaced with personalized direct worship of Shiva through practices such as individually worn icons and symbols such as small linga. The Sharana movement he presided over attracted people from all castes and like most strands of the Bhakti movement, he produced a corpus of literature called the Vachanas and it unveiled the spiritual universe of the Veera Shaiva saints. So here Vachana literature was not only involving Baswana but there are other people who were also the Veera Shaiva saints, this Bhakti movements, all the Sharanas, they used to write write the uh, poetry in the form of vachanas. Their trend is known as vachanas. The egalitarianism of Basavanna's Sharana movement was too radical for its times. Like, you know, even now we have so much of religious issues and societal issues. Just imagine back then. Back then in the 12th century, there were a lot of challenges, a lot of superstitions, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, religious move uh, means like a lot of complexities complexities happening in the society so he was too radical for that time the traditional legends and agiographic text state basava to be the founder of lingayats however modern scholarship relying on historical evidence such as the kalachuri inscriptions state that basava was the poet philosopher who revived refined and energized an already existing tradition basava raja devara ragale that is 13 out of 25 sections are available by the kannada poet harihara now, Basavaraja Devara Ragale was written by Kannada poet Harihara. It is the earliest available account on the life of the social reformer. It is considered important because the author was a near contemporary of his protagonist. So, please understand it was written by Harihara, not by not by Basavarna himself. He was the one who championed devotional worship he rejected temple worship and rituals which was led by brahmins he replaced it with personalized direct worship of shiva through practices such as individually worn icons and symbols like a small linga the sharana movement he presided over attracted people from all castes and like most strands of the bhakti movement he produced a corpus of literature that is vachanas he unveiled the spiritual universe of the Veera Shaiva saints. Please understand those times he was too radical because the society was too complex and there was so much of, uh, you know, superstitious beliefs and uh, so much complexities in the societies. So the traditional legends and hagiographic text state Basava was to be, was the founder of the Lingayat faith. Modern scholarships, they re rely on the historical evidence such as the Kalachuri inscription state. He was just a poet philosopher. He revived, uh, he revived and refined the energi and energized and already existing tradition. In fact, the roots were from the Sangam times or the Tamil uh, Bhakti movement, which was by the Nayanars, the Shaiva Nayanars of the Tamil Nadu. It was happening between 7th to 11th century and they took the roots from this Shaiva Nayanars and they started this Lingayat faith is what they say. He he was under King Bijala I of Kalachuri dynasty. Any doubts here? It was Basava Jayanti. Basavanna was 12th century poet, philosopher and founding saint of the Lingayat faith 
uh, he was uh, he was under king bijjala 1 of kalachuri dynasty he spread social awareness through poetry which was popularly known as vachanas he rejected gender or social discriminations superstitions and rituals he introduced new public institutions such as anubhava mantapa or the hall of fame he welcomed men and women from all socio economic backgrounds to discuss the spiritual and mundane questions of life in open he developed and inspired a new devotional movement named veera shaivas or ardent heroic worshipers of shiva he shared the movement that is the uh, devotional movement the sharana movement which he started had roots on ongoing tamil bhakti movement particularly the shaiva nayanar's tradition over the 7th to 11th century he championed the devotional worship he rejected the temple worship and rituals which was led by the brahmins he replaced it with personalized direct worship of shiva through practices such as individually worn icons and symbols like a small linga it he presided over attracted people from all castes and like most strands of the bhakti movement he produced a corpus of literature called the vachanas and unveiled the spiritual expir universe of the veera shaiva saints the egalitarianism of basavanna sharana movement was too radical for its times the traditional legends and hagiographic texts state basava to be the founder of lingayats the modern uh, scholarships just show he was a poet philosopher he revived uh, refined and energized an all, already existing tradition uh, one more point is basavaraja devara ragale it was written by kannada poet harihara and it is the earliest available account on the life of the social reformer he is considered important because the author was a near contemporary of his protagonist correct 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 pratham correct prabhu so let's go as a leader he worshiped and inspired a new devotional movement called uh, the veer shaivas they were the ardent heroic worshipers of shiva it shared its roots on the ongoing tamil bhakti movement particularly the shaiva nayanar tradition over 7th to 11th century he championed the devotional worships rejected temple worship and rituals which was led by the brahmins replaced it with personalized direct worship of shiva through practices such as individually worn icons like small linga he questioned the rituals he he questioned dualism externalization of god stated the true god is one within himself and is self born with mahatma basaveshwara rejected rituals he encouraged icons see he rejected rituals but he encouraged icons and symbols such as wearing ishtalinga means a necklace with personal linga or symbol of shiva so he just rejected rituals not icons and symbols he also rejected temples but he did not reject icons and symbols because he himself propagated using small linga wearing ishtalinga of rudraksha seeds or beads on parts of one body and apply vibhuti that is sacred ash on the forehead as a constant reminder of one's devotion and principles of faith another aid to faith he encouraged was the six syllable mantra shivaya namaha or shadakshara mantra which is om namah shivaya is what he said okay so this is anubhava mantapa allama prabhu used to lead he was the head he was the president of the sanubhava mantapa you can see akka mahadevi you can see uh, basavanna here this is anubhava mantapa now modern anubhava mantapa there was a laying a foundation stone laying ceremony by the karnataka chief minister so men and women from all faith socio economic orders used to come and discuss here about their daily mundane religious beliefs and practices in this anubhava mantapa this is called the first parliament of the world hope this is clear next this is kalakshetra i will give you 2 minutes time sorry 3 minutes time please answer i'll check in the live chat this is about kalakshetra
Come on, answer all of you. This is about Kalakshetra. Come on, answer all of you. Last minute left. Please answer. Okay. This is about Kalakshetra. This is about Kalakshetra and they've asked for correct statement. It is a center for artistic endeavor. Yes, it is very much correct. It was founded by Sarojini Naidu. Yes, Sarojini Naidu ji nahi start kiye the. It was by Rukmini Devi Arundel. So, it is located in Chennai. Yes, it is 1 and 3. C is the correct answer. Now, who all gave C as correct answer? Ankit, Prabhu, Pratham, Shivam. All of you have given and even Ankit, uh, Ankit and Prabhu have uh, mentioned it is Rukmini Devi Arundel. Yes, it is correct. It is not by Sarojini Naidu, but it is by Rukmini Devi Arundel. Kalakshetra Foundation, which was simply formally called the Kalakshetra, is an art and cultural academy. It is dedicated to the preservation of traditional values in Indian art and crafts, especially in the field of Bharatanatyam dance and Gandharva Veda music. It is based in Chennai. The academy was founded in 1936 by Rukmini Devi Arundel and her husband, George Arundel. So please understand, it's a uh, art and cultural academy. It is dedicated to the preservation of traditional values in Indian art and crafts, especially in the field of Bharatanatyam dance and Gandharva Veda music. It is based in Chennai. It was founded in 1936 by Rukmini Devi Arundel and her husband, George Arundel. In 1994, the Act of Parliament of India recognized the Kalakshetra Foundation as an institute of international, sorry, a national importance. So, it is an institution of na national importance. This is through the Act 1994. 94, an act of parliament of India recognized the Kalakshetra foundation as an institution of national importance. The Kalakshetra style it is noted for its angular, straight, ballet-like aesthetics and its avoidance of rekas and of the uninhibited throw or shape of the limbs. Please understand this is this is one academy, an art and cultural academy, and it is dedicated to preserve the traditional values in Indian art and crafts. This is especially in the field of Bharatanatyam dance and Gandharva Veda. Now, why did they uh, Rukmini Devi and, and her husband uh, George Arundel started this institution? Because back then this dance, Bharatanatyam, it was 
called Devadasi tradition. The Devadasis, the Devadasis were practicing this Bharatanatyam dance and they were downtrodden. To revive this Bharatanatyam dance and to upgrade its status, these two people, they started this academy. So it is mainly to preserve the traditional values in Indian art and crafts and Bharatanatyam was going to grave because of the uh, the lower esteem and uh, status which was given to the dancers that is devadasis there were a lot of low esteem for this people and the the dance was getting uh, downtrodden so to preserve this to preserve this traditional values and to revive this bharatanatyam and gandharva veda music they started this Kalakshetra in 1936 in Chennai by Rukmini Devi Arundale and her husband George Arundale. And in 1994, the Act of Parliament of India, it recognized the Kalakshetra Foundation as an institute of national importance and they started funding this. This is an aided organization. It is noted for its descriptions. There are different forms of uh, Bhartanatyam, Pandanaluru, Mysore style and, uh, and other styles but here they had their original values. So she's uh, Rukmini Devi Arundel was the one who designed the courses and designed this form of Kalakshetra style. Correct. All of you have answered correct. Next question. This is about reclining Buddha. Please answer. I'll give you three minutes. This is about reclining Buddha. One more minute left. Come on, answer. Okay. So this is about reclining Buddha. I had covered this in current affairs classes. I hope you all remember. But this is this comes under art and culture and news. So this is about reclining Buddha. So reclining Buddha ke baare mein ye correct statement puche hai. So it represents the historical Buddha during his last illness who is about to enter Pari Nirvana. So this is the last stage of illness of Buddha and he was about to enter the Pari Nirvana. First statement is correct. The reclining postures are more prevalent in Thailand and other parts of Southeast Asia. You all know. Southeast Asia and Japan and all, they are mainly Buddhist countries. In India, se Janam Pui, ye Buddhism, it entered Southeast Asian region, China, Sri Lanka and uh, Japan and even Korean Peninsula because of soft power. The soft power which we carried through Dharma Mahamatras and the messengers of Buddha, they all took Buddhism overseas, especially the reclining postures of uh, Reclining postures are more prevalent in Thailand and other parts of Southeast Asia. The reclining Buddha was first depicted in Madhubhani art. No, it is not Madhubhani art. And tell me in the live chat, where is Madhubhani art found? Where do we find, find this Madhubhani art? Can anyone answer here? 
where is this madhubani art found acha bihar others so yes this madhubani art is found in bihar but this was first depicted in gandhara art not in madhubani art so it was not from madhubani art madhubani art is from bihar and this was first uh, the reclining buddha was first depicted in gandhara art so re reclining buddha is the representation of buddha in his last illness and is about to enter parinirvana this reclining postures are most prevalent or more prevalent in thailand and other parts of southeast asia so it is 1 and 2 so it is c 1 and 2 on buddha chanti india's largest statue of reclining buddha was to have been installed at the buddha international welfare mission temple in bodh gaya now where is bodh gaya where is बोध गया वेर इज बोध गया यस बोध गया इज इन बिहार सो हियर दे वॉन्टेड टू इंस्टॉल और दे वॉन्ट टू इंस्टॉल दिस इंडिया इज लार्जेस्ट स्टैचू ऑफ रिक्लाइनिंग बुद्धा इन दिस टेम्पल दैट इज बुद्धा इंटरनेशनल वेलफेयर मिशन टेम्पल इन बोध गया में इंस्टॉल करना चाहते थे but this was put off due to covid-19 restrictions correct so it was put off due to covid-19 restrictions so it is a unesco world heritage site so the reclining buddha statue or image it represents the buddha during his last illness and he was about to attend the pari nirvana so it was during his last stages and he was about to go to pari nirvana now what is pari nirvana please answer what is pari nirvana what is pari nirvana what is pari nirvana yes enlightenment last stage the death the mukti yes correct so pari nirvana is a stage of great salvation after death and it can be attained only by the enlightened souls so after this he will be said he has attained the salvation so pari nirvana is a state of great salvation after death and it can be attained only by enlightened soul the buddha's death came when he was 80 years old and he was in a state of meditation in kushinagar in eastern uttar pradesh and it is close to the state's border with bihar the reclining buddha was first depicted in gandhara art and not in madhubani art so it was seen in the gandhara art it began in the period between 50 bc and 75 ad it peaked during the kushana period from the 1st to the 5th centuries ad and the statues and images of reclining buddha shows him lying on the right side his head resting on a cushion or in his right elbow so he'll be sleeping like this his hand will be on his right side his head will be resting on a cushion or his right elbow this is what is reclining buddha this shows the last stage of illness of buddha and he is about to attain the pari nirvana pari nirvana is a state of great salvation after death it can be attained only by the enlightened souls so pari nirvana or the buddha's death it came when he was 80 years old and he was in a state of meditation this he attained in kushinagar in eastern up and it is close to bihar's border the reclining buddha was first depicted in gandhara art this gandhara art 
and this reclining buddha depiction it began in the period between 50 bc and 75 ad it peaked during the kushana period from the 1st to 5th century ad the statues and images of the reclining buddha shows him lying on his right side his head resting on a cushion or on his right elbow so it is meant any doubts here please ask me correct ankit i think we should be serious uh, uh, can anyone tell me any doubts here Okay. Good. It is meant to show that all be all beings have the potential to be awakened and be released from the cycle of death and rebirth. So this will show all beings have the potential to be awakened and released from the cycle of death and rebirth. Buddha was against idol worship, but Basavanna, you should remember. he was against rituals against uh, temple worship but he was not against symbols and icons okay and the reclining postures are most prevalent in thailand other parts of southeast asia the largest reclining buddha in the world is 600 foot win sain tavya buddha it was built in 1992 in maula mine the bamala buddha parinirvana is in pakistan's khyber pakhtunkhwa province this dates back to 2nd century ad and is considered the oldest statue of its kind in the world so it is meant to show that all beings have the potential to be awakened released from the cycle of death and rebirth buddha was against idol worship the reclining postures are more prevalent in thailand other parts of southeast asia the largest reclining buddha in the world is the 600 foot win sain tavya buddha it was built in maula mine the bamala buddha parinirvana is in pakistan's khyber pakhtunkhwa province it, it dates back to 2nd century ad it is considered to be the oldest statue of its kind in the world so where are the buddhist uh, reclining buddha in india see here where are the reclining buddha in cave number 26 in cave number 26 of the unesco world heritage site of ajanta it contains 24 foot long and 9 foot tall sculpture so in cave number 26 of the unesco world heritage site of ajanta it contains 24 foot long and 9 foot tall sculpture of the reclining buddha he, it is believed to have been carved in the 5th century ad kushinagar where the buddha actually attained parinirvana as a 6 meter long red sandstone monolith statue of the reclining buddha inside the parinirvana stupa so please remember in india we have it in the ajanta it has 24 foot long and 9 foot tall sculpture of reclining buddha it is believed to have been carved in the 5th century kushinagar where the buddha actually attained parinirvana there also we have reclining buddha which is 6 meter long red sandstone monolith statue of the reclining buddha and it is inside the parinirvana stupa at the mahabodhi temple at the mahabodhi temple buddha is sitting in the bhumi sparsha mudra i have told you bhumi sparsha mudra is like this and uh, it, it's like this and he will be calling earth to come and witness that buddha has 
uh, uh, Buddha as one against Mara. So he is sitting in Bhumi Sparsha Mudra, where his hand is pointing towards the ground. It symbolizes earth as being witness to his enlightenment that he has won over Mara. At Sarnath, where the Buddha gave his first sermon, the stone statue has a hand gesture called Dharma Chakra Mudra. Dharma Chakra Mudra. It signifies preaching. This is also the most popular depiction in India along with Bodhi tree depiction. The walking Buddha is either beginning his journey towards enlightenment or returning after giving a sermon. It is the least common of the Buddha postures and is seen mostly in Thailand. So at the Mahabodhi temple, the Buddha is sitting in the Bhumi Sparsha Mudra. I told you like this. He will be Point is and is pointing towards the ground. It symbolizes earth as being witness to his enlightenment. At Sarnath, where the Buddha gave his first sermon, the strong statue, the stone statue as a hand gesture called the Dharma Chakra Mudra, it signifies preaching. Is this is also the most popular depiction in India along with Bodhi tree depiction. So the walking Buddha is either beginning his journey towards enlightenment or returning after giving a sermon. And this is the least common of the Buddha postures and is seen mostly in Thailand. So walking Buddha is the least seen posture. It's in Thailand. This is the reclining Buddha. This is in Thailand. This is the last stage of illness of Buddha and he is about to attain Mahapari Nirvana. So this is about Veer Savarkar. Please answer the question. I'll give you three minutes. Mm -hmm. So Ankit, Pratham, Prabhu, Anjum, I've answered others. Last minute left. Please answer. This is about Veer Savarkar. Last minute left. Come on, answer.
last few seconds There is some technical issue wait. So this is about sorry there was some technical issue I was trying to connect here. I was trying to connect here it was not connecting. So this is with reference to Veer Savarkar. This is with reference to Veer Savarkar. Consider the following statements and uh, uh, they have asked for correct statements here. He and his brother founded a secret society called Abhinav Bharat Society. I hope now you are able to hear me properly. Are you able to hear me properly? Yes. So he and his brother, he founded a secret society called Abhinav Bharat Society. So this is correct statement. His book, The Indian War of Independence, was banned by the British. Uh, they felt it is sedition and anti-British, so they had banned this book, The Indian War of Independence, in 1910. Savarkar was arrested. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, Savarkar was arrested in 1910 and he was ordered to be extradited to India for his connections with the revolutionary group India House. So, he and his brother, along with his brother, he started a secret society called Abhinav Bharat Society. The book, Indian War of Independence, was banned by the British. In 1910, Savarkar was arrested and he ordered to be extradited to India for his connections with the revolutionary group India House. So, yes, all of the above are correct. Sorry, there was technical issues. I am audible. No, that's what I was checking. So, Prabhu has answered. Last stand has answered. Pratham has answered. Anjum has, has answered. Ankit Anand has answered. And uh, all of you uh, have answered correct. All the very uh, good. All of you have answered correct. So, yes, uh, this is about Veer Savarkar. Now, why Veer Savarkar was in news? Because Pradhan Mantri Modi ji, he paid tributes to pioneering Hindutva ideologue that is Veer Savarkar on his birth anniversary, 28th May. Inko tributes diye the Amare Pradhan Mantri ji Modi. He was born on May 28, 1883 in Bagur, a city in Maharashtra's Nashik district. So, Maharashtra has given birth to so many freedom fighters. We had seen Gokhale, we had seen Tilak, we had seen uh, uh, Mahadev Govind Ranade, and we had seen Dada Bhai Nauroji and many, many more we have seen. And uh, we also have one more. Uh, we also saw Jyoti Rao uh, Pule, Jyoti Ba Pule, and uh, we saw uh, now Veer Savarkar. He was from Nashik district of Maharashtra. He was against foreign goods and he propagated the idea of Swadeshi. In 1905, he burned all foreign goods in bonfire on Dashara. He championed atheism and rationality and also he disapproved orthodox Hindu belief. He even dismissed cow worship as superstitious. He also worked on abolishment of untouchability in Ratnagiri. Vinayak Savarkar was a president of Hindu Mahasabha from 1937 to 1943. 
when Congress ministries offered resignation on October 1939. Oh, good Pratham, good Pratham. So you would be knowing more about him. So he was a president of Hindu Mahasabha from 1937 to 1943. When Congress ministries, they offered resignation in 1939. The Hindu Mahasabha under its leadership, he cooperated, they cooperated with the Muslim League to form the government in the provinces like Sindh, Bengal and Northwest Frontier Province. In Pune, Savarkar founded the Abhinav Bharat Society. So he was from Maharashtra's Nashik district. He was against the foreign goods and he propagated the idea of Swadeshi. In 1905, he burnt all the foreign goods in a bonfire on Dashera. He championed atheism. He was actually not believing in God and he was rational in his approach. Whatever superstitious beliefs and all it was there, he used to ask for scientific proof. He also disproved orthodox Hindu beliefs. He even dismissed cow worship as superstitious. You know, that much rational he was. And he worked on abolishment of untouchability in Ratnagiri. Vinayak Savarkar was a president of Hindu Mahasabha and from 1937 to 1940. 43. When Congress ministries offered resignation on 22nd October 1939, Hindu Mahasabha under his leadership cooperated with the Muslim League to form the government in provinces like Sindh, the Bengal and Northwest Frontier Province. He founded this Abhinav Bharat Society. He was also involved in the Swadeshi movement. He later joined Tilak's Swaraj party. He is instigating patriotic speeches, activities incensed the British government. As a result, the British government withdrew his BA degree. He was so patriotic in his speeches. It was very like, very much like a fire. His activities were incensed, means smelt. It was felt by the British government and they withdrew his BA degree. He founded this Free India Society. The society celebrated important dates on the Indian calendar, including the festivals, freedom movement, landmarks, and it was dedicated to furthering discussion about Indian freedom. So he wanted free India. He celebrated all the Indian festivals, freedom movements, and landmarks. Yes, he was very aggressive leader, Prabhu. He was very aggressive leader. Vinayak Savarkar and Ganesh Savarkar, they were brothers. They were brothers, Vinayak Savarkar and Ganesh Savarkar and they started this Mitra Mela, a revolutionary secret society in Nashik in 1899. He was very aggressive, a fire brigade he was. He, uh, he was uh, right from his colleges. He was uh, very patriotic. He was giving patriotic speeches and uh, he founded this Free India Society. He started this Mitra Mela, a revolutionary secret society in Nashik in 1899. In his book, The History of War of Indian Independence, Savarkar wrote about the guerrilla warfare tricks which was used in 1857 point mutiny we saw about maharana pratap he was also using this guerrilla warfare we saw even shivaji using guerrilla warfare so in this 1857 point mutiny also we had the usage of guerrilla warfare tricks and he has written in his book the history of the war of indian independence and it was banned by the Britishers, but Madam Bikaji Kama, she published the book in Netherlands, Germany and France. She uh, And it eventually reached many Indian revolutionaries. You know the revolutionaries, how they get ignited. We had the revolutionaries. So that's why he joined Tilak's Swaraj party. So he founded this two-nation theory in his book, that is Hindutva. He called Hindus and Muslims are two separate nations. So he was the one who founded this two nation theory in his book that is Hindutva. Okay, and Hindu Mahasabha passed it as a resolution. The two nation theory was passed by the Hindu Mahasabha as a resolution in 1937. So he was Veer Savarkar, a very aggressive friar brigade. So this is birth anniversary he was from maharashtra's nashik he was against foreign goods and propagated the idea of swadeshi he was a champion of atheist he was an atheist 
he believed in rationality disapproved the orthodox hindu beliefs he even dismissed cow worship as superstitious he worked in abolishment of untouchability in ratnagiri he was president of hindu mahasabha from 1937 to 43 when congress ministries offered resignation this hindu mahasabha under his leadership they joined the muslim league and they formed the government in the provinces like sindh bengal and northwest frontier province he started or founded this abhinav bharat society he was involved in the swadeshi movement he later joined the tilak swaraj party is instigating patriotic speeches and activities incensed the british government as a result the british government withdrew his ba degree he founded the free india society the society celebrated important dates on the indian calendar including the festivals freedom movement and many things uh, uh, he he along with his brother he started mitra mela a revolutionary secret society in nashik in 1899 in his book the history of the war of indian independence savarkar wrote about the guerrilla warfare tricks which was used in 1957 sepoy mutiny his book was banned by the britishers but madam bikaji kama she published the book in netherlands germany and and france and it reached the revolutionaries he was the founder of two nation theory in his book hindutva he called hindus and muslims are belonging to two nations this was passed as a resolution by hindu mahasabha so we saw about veer savarkar we saw about the reclining buddha he was about to attain mahaparinirvana uh, we saw about kalakshetra uh, started by rukmini devi arundel and we saw basavanna and his anubhava mantapa Thank you so much. Let's catch up tomorrow at the same time for the art and culture and news. And now let's uh, please join me in solving the PYQs at an academy platform. So thank you. Have a great day. Like and share the video and also press the bell button for further notifications and subscriptions. Use my code Chilpa and 10 for any subscriptions. Also follow me on an academy. Thank you.